<laughs> Poor Don Lemon. Nice guy. Show's really unbelievable. Christopher Harris was on it the other night. He's the man you saw sitting there. He's executive director of Unhyphenated America, and he joins us tonight. So I watched that that clip, and first I felt I felt so bad for you, but I also thought it was kind of an amazing moment where you basically had someone defending the use of racial slurs because they're politically expedient. Well, what happened, uh, Tucker, was that the left showed who they really are. I mean, of course, uh, Tara calls herself a conservative and a Republican, but uh, yeah, I mean, well, well, we'll let her say what she wants to say, but at the end of the day, what the left does, they try to put everybody in a box. Yeah. And we, would, with unhyphenate, unhyphenated America, what we believe is America's best when it's unhyphenated. That if you believe in, if you embrace, if you understand that, uh, and embrace the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, then you're an American, and there's no need for any pre prefix or suffix, you're just an American. And so trying to put all these, trying to put everybody into a particular box, saying that you must think a particular way because of your paint job, as one of my buddies says, uh, the melanin kind content in your skin is one of the problems that the left has. And what they're doing is they're focusing on identity politics. And they try to say, well, Donald Trump obviously must be a racist because, well, look at the lack of diversity without kind of doing some critical analysis and saying, well, how many black people actually applied for a, a White House internship? And even then, when you look at what exactly what happened with Ms. Setmeyer is that she just vilified any black person who doesn't toe the line. Well, exactly. So and, what happens, I mean, and one of the reasons for the hysteria, I think, is Trump actually got a higher percentage of the black vote than the Republican ran before him, Mitt Romney. Not a ton, but more, so that freaked him out. But what happens to the country long term if you encourage everyone in it, of all colors, to think of themselves first as members of a racial or ethnic group? Like what happens over time? Uh, balkanization. Yeah. You know, the term, a lot of people are not familiar with it, but uh, the Balkan region, uh, what you have is a lot of uh, different tribes, different groups of people who are all constantly warring against each other. And one of the things that, I mean, we are the United States of America. I mean, granted, you have people, you're maybe a Virginian or you're a South Carolinian or a Texan or whatever like that. And so you might have a certain amount of pride for being, uh, being from the state that you're from. But at the end of the day, we're all Americans. We have something unifying right. in our culture. It's once again, it's those beliefs in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it's one of those things that they keep trying to push these identity politics to say that you must think a particular way because of the color of your skin. But more importantly, they want you to believe that they want me to believe that because of the color of my skin that I'm, in an, I'm inherently a victim, that I will always be a victim, and that I should vote a particular way for the people who, I guess, uh, they want to protect me. But you know, we can look at the black community overall, and here's the reality. What has gotten better in the past 50 years, as long as blacks have been voting 70 plus percent for the Democratic Party? No one can say that things have gotten better from economic standpoint. The schools haven't gotten better. Uh, economically, we're not doing better. Family-wise, we're not doing better. But yet, these are the points that they keep wanting to push with these identity politic issues, and, and it's just really maddening. Do you think quickly that maybe the identity politics is designed to distract people from thinking about their actual circumstances, from asking mm -hmm. the questions you just raised, which is like, is my life better? Am I making more? Is my family better off? If they can wave the red flag of race in front of you, maybe you won't think about those things. Well, you know, Don, the reality is, I mean, I attend McLean Bible Church, yeah. which is a Good huge church. church. It's a, a ethnically diverse church. I mean, I always say that the culture is Christian, but it's an ethnically diverse church. We have over a hundred different cultures, excuse me, ethnicities represented at yeah, our yeah. church. And when you have people interacting one-on-one, -on -one, you know, there's no real issues of well, racism. Exactly. exactly. And church is the best, the best possible example of that. Thank you very much. That was Thank great. You, Thank great you for having me. You. Google is expanding research efforts in China that could eventually help the Chinese military